Hello again everyone, welcome to Tuesday's uh, video message, hope you're doing well today. Uh, today we're going to kind of continue to think uh, around Acts chapter 2, which is our uh, series uh, that Dave started yesterday, that's going on for the next couple of weeks. Really appreciated Dave's message yesterday, really helpful thoughts and teaching on the Holy Spirit. Um, if you haven't uh, watched that or heard it yet then although the service wasn't live streamed Dave did pre-record it and so uh, the link for that is on today's email if you want to go and have a listen to that uh, and I want us to think about uh, what was going on uh, at the start of Acts 2 so um, it was the time of a Jewish festival uh, the Jewish festival was called Shavuot or in English we would call it the Feast of Weeks now that sounds like my kind of feast uh, a feast of weeks yeah bring that on um, and so because it was a Jewish festival there would have been thousands of visitors to Jerusalem for the festival um, and that throughout the year they would have different festivals and people would travel for many miles to be part of the festival um, if you've ever noticed in some of the psalms, um, psalms particularly 120 to 134, they're called songs of ascent, and it's believed they were the songs that were sung as the as the Jewish people from all around travelled in for uh, the festivals that were going on. And so we have here at the start of Acts chapter two this whole list of um, different people from different places who had come for the festival. And so this morning we're going to have a geography lesson. How exciting is that? I know, I'm sure you can barely contain yourselves. And I need to warn you at this point that as your geography teacher this morning, um, it, geography was the one O level that I managed to fail. Uh, so it's probably fairly, uh, fairly... Uh, okay to recognize that this isn't something that I'm particularly strong on but nonetheless we're going to give it a go so here's your geography lesson just have a look at Acts chapter 2 if you've uh, if you haven't got it open you might want to just do that uh, and uh, while we have a look through it um, I had to read all these place names um, uh, on the pre-recorded service on Sunday and then Ian Gardner had to read them all again uh, some of them aren't very easy but let's just have a look a little bit more information into them as to where they are so we're starting in Jerusalem where the people are and if we uh, look east to Jerusalem from Jerusalem then we find uh, Parthia uh, Media and uh, Elam which is where the Parthians Medes and Elamites come from and that is modern day Iran so that's a, a long way east from Jerusalem Mesopotamia is also east, but it's it, it's uh, in modern day Iraq, which is kind of closer uh, closer to Jerusalem. Uh, then let's think north. The, the next list um, of Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Pamphylia, um, Asia. It says in the note at the bottom is the Roman um, uh, place roman province so it's not asia as in the continent they're all in turkey all those places which is of course north of jerusalem uh staying north but heading much further west rome is mentioned uh which is uh, f much further over to the west but still slightly north of jerusalem uh, going south and west we've got egypt that's mentioned and also libya near cyrene is uh, a little bit further round and on the coast to the the southwest of Jerusalem, and then there's Crete, which is kind of qu pretty close to directly uh, west. The island of Crete uh, is in that direction too. And finally, Arabs are listed here, and in biblical times they would be uh, people from the Arabian desert. Um, so that's way uh, southeast, so over in that direction. So you can see in, in, the people have come from a huge circle around Jerusalem for the festival. Let's just think um, it, what that means in terms of, of distances. Just the three furthest would be Parthia to the northeast, Rome to the northwest, and the Arabs from the Arabian Desert from the southeast. We're talking about... Uh, 1,300 to, to 1,500 miles away each of those places from Jerusalem uh, generally traveling on foot 
as the disciples would have done in those days. We're looking at 20 miles a day, something like that. That's 70 days to make that journey. You may or may not have found that interesting. Why am I telling you that? Why is that information useful to us? Well, just turn back to Acts chapter 1, where uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he's, uh, as Dave pointed out, the disciples uh, say to him, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Their view of the Messiah was that they were going to come in and restore all of Israel and remove the Romans and return it to its rightful owners. So they go, is, it, is that happening now? And, G and Jesus says, that's not for you to know, as Dave said on Sunday. But then he says this in verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth you will be my witnesses Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the ends of the earth and so they wait in the upper room the Holy Spirit comes on them how long is it going to take for that journey to, to Jerusalem Judea Samaria and beyond well remarkably as we look at the story and see what happens, they walk out of the building that they've just been filled with the Holy Spirit in, and there they all are. People from Jerusalem, people from Judea. Judea was mentioned there as well in the list, but we know that that, that uh, was where they were. Uh, and people from beyond Samaria, and thousands of miles away, all there hearing about Jesus, hearing the gospel message. Jesus' promise to them of being witnesses beyond uh, even Samaria, which was would be kind of around where they would travel, is it comes true the very first hour after they receive the Holy Spirit. All these people are there. And it's a remarkable thing. Uh, and for me, that what's, what's their lesson for us? Why do we need to think about that? Because there are things uh, beyond our grasp, beyond our understanding, beyond our reach, things that we think, well, that could never happen. Maybe they're, uh, they're promises from God that you've uh, kind of hanging on to but aren't sure about. Maybe it's, it's uh, longings of, of you for things in your life or in the lives of others. Things that feel, well, even if we start now, this is going to take a long time to ever get to the place where... Uh, God makes a difference in this. Well, 70 days worth of travel and they do it and God within an hour has those people listening to the gospel and responding to it. And we know that 3,000 people responded to the gospel, but it doesn't say that they then all stayed in Jerusalem. Many of them would have been from all these places that have been listed and back they would go to those places with the gospel message, the Holy Spirit in them. Uh, Paul, uh, Peter specifically says that they can be, they will receive the Holy Spirit if they respond. So, but they go all those miles, taking the gospel with them, taking the story of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. God can do in moments what we feel would take days, months, or years. And I just want you to hold on to that as an encouragement today. Whatever it is that you're uh, uh, seeking after, whether it's personal in your own life or in the lives of those you love, whether it's national or international, just remember God has the power to do uh, in, a, in a very short moment what we think is going to take years or even a lifetime. And God does whatever pleases him. He is at work. And he can turn things around whenever he chooses. He doesn't have to wait uh, for anyone. He doesn't answer to anyone. It's entirely up to him and it's all in his hands. And we can trust him and be confident that, that he will do what needs to be done. But what he knows needs to be done, not necessarily what we think. So I hope that's helpful um, just to ponder some more on and to think about what God might be up to and that he is at work. And that he can turn things round in just a moment. So Lord, we thank you for that uh, simple message that we see here. Thank you for your promise 
uh, to the disciples, which seemed a long, long way off, must have seemed impossible to them. And then you're ascended and they receive the Holy Spirit. And there, right in front of them, are people from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the ends of the earth. Lord, uh, you are an amazing God. And we thank you that you are at work in the situations that we're praying about and seeking you for. And Lord, we would pray that we'd see your power and glory at work in these situations. Lord, we know that in a moment you can turn things upside down. And if that's your will, we would pray that you would do that for your glory, Lord. Come and break in, Lord, and show us what you're capable of. That's way beyond our imaginings. Amen. Great to share with you. Catch you again soon.